stars in the sky could not be seen because people never raised their heads. The stars didn't stand out, but it didn't mean that they were gone. When all the lights were put off, there they appeared, shining faintly, and the boys came from the horizon crossing the border. But the darkness stopped the boys, and there was no light to cast it away. People hoped that the flame within the boys would consume the darkness. And as they prayed, the fiery voice of the boys broke the silence and awakened the world. The chromer in my hand flashed. But I was still in the hideout. Members who are looking at me were the same too. It was like an unbelievable dream to hear about the various dimensions from the man wearing a black fedora and to see the chromer in my hand. Right then, an uncount voice came from outside. As the sound neared, giants dressed in white suddenly appeared, breaking the hideout door. They were wearing masks that covered their entire face and did not feel like people. They were looking for the chromer. It did not matter where this place was or whether this place was really located in a different dimension. What matters now is that those dangerous white-clad giants are out for the Cromer in our hands and that we cannot go back home if we lose the Cromer. I had to protect the Cromer and the members at the same time. But that was more like a gamble. Right that moment a broken piece of glass under my foot caught my eye. I received the Cromer from Yuno and started to provoke the giants. I'll give you the Cromer. I shouted and threw what I had in my hand through the window. The members who were watching from behind were shocked as the sparkling piece flew away in an arc. The white-clad giants ran towards it in haste. At the same time, I yelled run away. The place around the hideout was very similar to where we used to stay. If I had not faced the strange creatures, I would not have believed all the sayings about the different dimensions and the chromer. Fortunately we escaped the hideout safely. And thanks to being familiar of the surroundings we were able to find out way halfway down in the dark. Visible spaces were similar to the reality we knew but were also slightly different. Under the cliff where Wu Young saved our Bobo in the past there used to be a valley and a gigantic rock on top. But here no sounds of water flowing could be heard nor could the gigantic rock could be seen. Same, yet strangely different. By the time I was immersed in such thoughts, I could hear the members laughing. The members, who had been taking a break for a while, were playing with each other. Relieved that the Cromer was safe, what Hong Jung had thrown out the window was a piece of glass similar to the Cromer, not the real one. The child who saved me was a girl who matched well with the moonlight. The girl willingly invited us to her house, tired of being chased and running away. We fell asleep immediately and, in the meantime, the girl healed my injured ankle. The white-clad giants, who had been fooled by the glass fragments, attacked us again while we were resting in the middle of the forest, as the giants dragged me away by my ankle. All the members rushed to save me and so we ended up losing the Cromer, after they took the Cromer away and turned their eyes away. Stones rolled over from the cave in the forest, when we ran towards it. A girl in the cave gestured between the rocks. The girl had a brother. The boy said she could not speak because the white-clad giants took away the girl's voice. They introduced themselves as the Grimes' siblings. One day they suddenly disappeared. The Grimes' siblings looked at us with sad eyes. According to the Grimes siblings the central government here established a stable future policy for the entire human race by running AI simulations. They put the blame on human emotions for causing crimes and terrorism that threaten humanity. And so the key to their policy was to control the variables called human emotions. A bill to lower human emotions below the thresholds by using advanced technology and a bill to ban the arts, which greatly affects human emotions, had been passed. Consequently, the central government had achieved high growth under a strong control policy, and people enjoyed material affluence. However, laughter disappeared from their faces and only efficiency and logic became the priority in this society. As those days continued, men wearing black fedora began to appear one day. They sung and performed here and there and that was said to have the power to attract people. Being stimulated by these men, people who escaped the control began to appear. People from various fields formed a resistance against the central government and called themselves the Black Pirates. The central government put the men in black fedora on the wanted list. 
but they repeatedly failed to arrest them due to them being able to teleport using the Chromer. However, at last by putting in the new android guardians probably the white-clad giants who came to catch us, the government succeeded in capturing the men in Black Fedora, the Black Pirates and the Resistance. All that does not matter. What is important is that we need the Chromer to return home, and that we lost our Chromer to the Android Guardians. To my beloved father. Father, I'm walking towards the Strickland where I may not be able to come back. Now that I'm walking on a bumpy road after always having walked on a beautiful and straight road, my feet keep on throbbing. My feet are sore, but I still feel good. That is because I'm with my friends and I'm walking towards a place that I've decided on my own. Everyone says this is a new world but somehow, I'm familiar with the scenery here. The city I faced after coming down from the woods. I could only see people who were running without taking a single look at the sky as if they were being chased. People who took the escalators like products being placed on machines. People who removed unnecessary smiles and only talked about their needs. And people who are only looking at small machines, having forgotten to see each other face to face. I thought that maybe this place is not a new world. But then I'm just taking a microscopic look at the world I was living in. Father, I know you were shocked to see me singing and dancing with these friends. But I really wanted to escape the world I've lived in. The world I've been trapped in. I love my parents so much. But I have never been happy in your world. When we were kicked out of the garage that we have been using as our hideout and had to be separated. What was more painful to me was that my father was the one who drove us out. I became the person who took happiness away from the friends who have willingly invited me to their world. I regretted that if they haven't met me from the beginning. This situation wouldn't have happened. I resented you father. Father. Thus I will not return to the world you have created. It's not that I don't love you but that I don't want to blame you anymore. Your son. Yo Sang. To find the Cromer, we must go to the Android Guardian's bunker. But the only person who knows the bunker is Left Eye, the manager of the Strickland Dump. So, we had no choice but to come to this place, as if they were continuously burning trash. The yellow smoke, which is said to cause hallucinations, was constantly soaring, perhaps because of that. The man named Left Eye was mumbling to himself in the air. Phew, how do we locate the android bunker from that person? Thanks to Nosy Wu Young, we decided to find out the location of the android bunker as well as regain the voice of the Grimes girl. That dude is always so unnecessarily nosy like that. What we have heard from Hong Jung and the Grimes siblings. That Left Eye man seems to have his own story too. Whatever. There's no one without a story. Anyways, we split into teams. Members who will go into a pile of trash that looks like a cave to find the voice and members who will convince Left Eye to find out the location of the android bunker. I was in the latter. I heard a basketball bounce. I thought I misheard. To find the girl's abandoned voice. I slowly entered the cave with a thin string tied around my body and a gas mask on my face. I don't even know how someone can abandon a voice and find it back. But they say it's possible because of the new energy extraction thing. I have never seen the shape of a voice before. When I asked the Grimes boy if it has a shape or color, he said that it looks like a bead with a blue condensed energy inside. The bead the boy had told us was shining deep inside the yellow smoke. Then, I heard the basketball bounce again. When I stopped walking, a basketball rolled in front of my feet. Victory is mine. J.H., it was my ball. When I looked up, I was standing in a stadium. What are you doing? Pass it. My teammate shouted at me. Is it deja vu? I blanked out. The whistle rang in the stadium. I think I had a strange dream for a bit. I was looking for something, but I couldn't remember what it was. The game started again. I ran into the court. Left eye who ran a small but unique brand shop after studying fashion design, was often disqualified from interviews at the fashion house due to his unfriendly appearance. However, he had great skill and was a warm person with a passion. Until he lost his daughter. His daughter was hit by a speeding car while she was reaching out her hand to save a flower that had bloomed on the road. People thought moving forward quickly was more important than looking around. Even after seeing the child on the street after getting hit by the car, 
People were busy passing by, pretending not to have seen anything. During that time, the child died slowly. Left Eye is said to have become furious and fallen into despair when he had belatedly learned of this truth and has become a completely different person ever since. After losing his daughter, he met the illusion of his daughter while being intoxicated by the smoke that creates delusions at Strickland's dump. And while he was wandering around in the dump, he was selected by the android guardian to become the manager of the Strickland's dump. It reminded me of my brother the whole time I heard his story. I empathized with Left Eye's feelings a little bit. Left Eye reminded me of when I had lost my brother. Despite my original intentions to find about the android bunker, I personally wanted to help him out as well. To do so, we had to lure him to a place where the smoke was not severe. We had to make him realize that the daughter he was looking at was not real but just an illusion. <laughs> The safety strap tied to Zhang Ho's body stopped and no longer moved. Worried, Yo Sing went into the trash cave wearing the last remaining gas mask to find out about the situation. The game that caused Zhang Ho's ankle injury was going on in front of his eyes. Zhang Ho dismissed all the things that had happened as mere illusion and deja vu and ran more fiercely to erase the disgrace of that past. Left Eye started to attack the members, running away from Left Eye who was chasing them. They secretly lured him into a smoke-free space. When his daughter's illusion disappeared, he became even more furious. Everyone was unsure what to do. But then Yunho shouted amid the silence. Your daughter is dead. Everyone looked at Yunho in surprise. You're denying it because you don't want to believe it. But aren't you already aware of the truth? Yunho accused him once again. I'll kill you. Left Eye let out a shriek and swung a big bat at Yunho. Zhang Ho when Yo Sang had arrived, Zhang Ho was intoxicated with illusion and was running furiously toward the cliff. 